بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرفاء والأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. It's with great honor that I stand before you here today. My name is Suhaim Mujaddidi. I'm currently a junior at Zaytuna College, and I've been asked to say a few words about my experiences as a student. But before I go into specific aspects of the college, I'd like to briefly share with all of you why I chose to study at Zaytuna. It's a short story that I often share. Upon graduation from high school, one of my closest friends, she had just gotten accepted into Harvard University. She came to me and she said, what college did you get accepted to? I looked at her and I said, well, you know what, now that you mention it, I actually got into a school much better than Harvard. She said, did you get into Yale? I said, no, no. She said, did you get into Oxford or Cambridge? I said, no, I got into Zaytuna College in Berkeley, California. She looked at me and she said, well, what makes Zaytuna College better than Harvard? I told her that my decision to attend Zaytuna College was rooted in a piece of advice my father gave me when I was young. He said that what makes somebody truly intelligent is proficiency in language. In other words, how well someone can articulate themselves in both speech and composition is a true sign of understanding. Language is what makes us human, and the perfection of language is indeed a perfection of our humanity. When I was surveying the different colleges, I noticed that Zaytuna College made a very interesting argument about education. They argued that there does in fact exist a foundation from which the acquisition of all other subjects is possible. That intellectual foundation is composed of logic, grammar, and rhetoric. Their argument stood out to me in particular because it echoed the words of my father, because logic, grammar, and rhetoric all concern the science of language. The study of these sciences, what's classically known as the trivium, is all about fortifying the individual intellect, whereby it's skilled and equipped enough to answer any question it needs. I came to Zaytuna to seek this method. I came to Zaytuna College to learn how to speak, to learn how to write, to learn how to reason. I came to Zaytuna College because all the great minds of the past, from the Islamic and Western tradition, from the philosophers to the mathematicians, utilized this particular method. And Zaytuna College was the only program in the country, as far as I knew, that offered an epistemology which reflected this historically verified philosophy of education. What makes Zaytuna's epistemology different is their approach to the question of the human intellect. From a classical perspective, the true power of the human intellect does not consist in collecting facts, which is something most modern people believe. The true power of the human intellect consists in its ability to transcend from those particular facts in order to arrive at the universal principles through which those facts exist. In other words, true understanding is not in knowing that things are, it's in knowing what, how, and why they are. Zaytuna was one of the few institutions that I observed that was still grounded in these sacred metaphysical principles. Now, why are these metaphysical principles important? They're important because they function as the means by which the world of particularity, the world of the everyday, the world of flux is understood. They can be likened to tool sciences, which function as the means by which all other subjects are accessed. Hence, at Zaytuna, we don't simply say that we learn, we say that we learn the very principles of learning itself. For me, the philosophy behind Zaytuna's approach to education was definitely sound, and its efficacy was confirmed 
in history. But upon studying, I've come to realize that the true benefit of Zaytuna's education is all about the future. And here's why. If you look at the history of Islamic civilization in particular, one thing you'll notice is that the very spirit of Islamic civilization was carried by scholars. It was through their books and ideas that religion took form in the different societies Islam was a part of. But scholarship does not come out of a vacuum. Great minds require training, they require cultivation, they require institutions. Take, for example, a great mind from our tradition, Fakhradin al-Razi, who is actually from Herat, Afghanistan, which is where my family is from. If you look at Imam al-Razi's books, one thing you'll notice in his style of writing and his approach to argumentation is that he was, without a doubt, a master logician. He argues with incredible accuracy and logical precision. The question I asked myself was, where did Fakhradin al-Razi learn logic? It must have been taught. And the point that I'm trying to make here is, it took years of preparation, it took years of training for him to produce the works that he ended up producing. And because he spent time in an institution that gave him the necessary tools, we are still reading his works a thousand years later. In fact, even in Western academia, they are studying Fakhradin al-Razi. I was just at the library at UC Berkeley and I came across a book entitled Fakhradin al-Razi and St. Thomas Aquinas on the question of the eternality of the world. Now the concept of an educational institution in the West and in contemporary periods has taken on a pejorative connotation. In fact, much of modern philosophy is spent critiquing institutions. Thinkers in the West, starting from Kierkegaard, going to, to Nietzsche, started to examine institutions as places where the individual was lost and forgotten, where the individual was subsumed beneath a structure of hierarchy or power. But from an Islamic perspective, we see institutions in a different light. The function of Islamic institutions was all about giving the individual the necessary tools where he or she, as an individual, could actualize the intellectual and spiritual principles that lay within through their own individual autonomy. Islamic institutions were about passing down a prophetic tradition so that a thinker could realize the value of his existence and the great burden that comes with it. Islamic institutions were about giving the individual self in its metaphysical reality a true understanding of what it was, what the world was, and how these can be means towards understanding God. Today, Across the world, educational institutions adopt a system that social scientists call the banking method. In this method, the mind of a student is seen as nothing more but an empty depository waiting to be filled by a collection of lifeless facts. And I know this to be true because this is or this was the system of education that I was a part of for 18 years. They argue that facts are the only things needed in order to perform a particular task in a workforce environment. In other words, principles and necessary tools are no longer needed. Now, preparing an individual to work in a particular occupation is in and of itself not a bad thing per se, but it should not be the only thing that education offers the human being. And this is where people of religion need to step into the conversation. When you look at the history of religious institutions, one thing you come to recognize is that the greatest contribution religion has made to humanity overall is in the field of education. We believe education is about individual enlightenment. We believe that it's about much more than the specialization in a particular occupation. 
It is why we believe that the only thing necessary for man in this world is knowledge. Without that key feature, existence in this world will become a mystery, it will become unbearable. But my mother, being the practical person that she is, she will always ask, what is it that you really want to do with this knowledge? What is it that you want to do with this Zaytuna degree? And I always tell her, I believe I can study anything. I believe I could go into law, politics, academia, finance, mathematics, but I see all of these different subjects as mere means, means that can be easily mastered. But those means have to be seen in the context of a much greater end. For all the young people in the audience, and I'll end with this, I believe that God has placed us at a very unique point in human history. It's a point where the Islamic intellectual and spiritual tradition needs to be both recovered and expanded. And that's a great task. And I personally believe that if I don't step up to this task, I don't know who will. But if we truly want to understand the future of Islamic civilization, we don't need to look at public policy, we don't need to look at the news, we simply have to step inside of a classroom, observe the system of education, and you'll understand what the future will look like. I came to Zaytuna College in order to reclaim our civilization's rightful role as educators of the future. I came to Zaytuna College to be a part of building that future, a future centered around metaphysical and sacred principles, a future that all of us, each and every one of us, in our own capacities, God willing, can and will be a part of. Thank you.